the word of command has always been, follow me. We must I him, meaning Jesus, as our leader and captain, and tread in his steps and walk as he walked. Follow the prescriptions of his word, the intimations of his providence, and the directions of his spirit. Follow the Lamb whithersoever he goes. In vain do we hear his voice if we do not follow him. This is a quote coming to you from Matthew Henry. In this broadcast, we are continuing our new series based on the theme, Striving for the Mastery. In this particular broadcast, we will use as our main text, John 10, verse 4, which says, And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now, in this broadcast, we will be talking about, first of all, the voice, and then following the voice. The voice always precedes the following. Now remember that. The voice always precedes the following. So let me ask you a few questions pertaining to the voice of the shepherd, the voice of Jesus. First of all, have you listened for his voice? Do you know his voice? Have you been too hurried with the matters of this world to pay attention to it? Have you been perplexed and distracted by various demands, all kinds of voices claiming your allegiance? Have you been selfish, self-centered, or stopping your ears to the voice of Jesus? Or have you been afraid that his demand would be difficult. Is this why you don't know which is his voice in all the voices of the world? In John 10, 3, Jesus said these words, and the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. He said the sheep. He's talking about the real Christians, they hear the voice of the shepherd. They hear it. They listen to it. They give heed to it. They understand it. They readily discern the well-known voice of the shepherd. Then he went on to say in John ten twenty seven, My sheep hear my voice. My sheep, they're they're the real Christians, those who are of his flock. My sheep hear my voice. They know it to be his. They discern it. But not only that, they delight in it. They are in their element when they're sitting at his feet to hear his word and then to do according to it and make his word their rule. Then in John ten four. Jesus said, for they know his voice. Not only do they hear his voice, but they know his voice. All is useless unless the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. They know his voice. They recognize his familiar voice. They discriminate their shepherd from all others. They know him by his voice, even when they cannot see him. Then in John 10, 4, Jesus went on to say, after saying they hear his voice, they know his voice, and they, he went on to say, and the sheep follow him. The sheep followed the shepherd. Now there's a custom in the eastern countries for the shepherd to go at the head of the sheep. And so they follow him. They follow that shepherd from pasture 
to pasture. And the same is true of Jesus' sheep. His disciples are led. He goes before them to lead them. They tread in his steps in the exercise of self-denial and resignation of their will to his will. They walk as he walked. Then in John 10, 27, Jesus said this, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. They know my voice, they hear my voice, and they follow me. He's talking right there about an active obedience to his command. Jesus, as the shepherd, has every right to lead us wherever he pleases. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. So submission is our duty. We submit to his guidance. We follow him. We yield to his guidance. We seek to be led by him. Now the truth of the matter is that some hear the voice, some know his voice, but they don't follow it. They put it from him, from them. They know his voice, but they have not obeyed. This is the case with some. They know the voice of the shepherd. They know the voice of Jesus, but they aren't following it. Well, let me ask you, if you will not hear Jesus, whose voice are you listening to? If you don't care for the invitation that he puts out to prayer, to come seek me with all of your heart, if you don't care for the invitation to prayer, to purity of heart, to worship, or to reverence of God, then you're hearing the voice which invites you to pride, to self-satisfaction, self-indulgence, or even to wicked ways. The preacher's homiletic commentary said this, Have you followed your Lord? How often have mammon Life's pleasures, agreeable and easy tranquility, been your leaders. Then in John 10, 5, Jesus went on to say, And a stranger will they not follow. He said, My sheep hear my voice, they know my voice, and they follow me. And then he went on to say, And a stranger will they not follow. A stranger the stranger is anyone other than the shepherd. He is a thief or a robber, someone who seeks to lead you away from Jesus, away from the shepherd. And a, she a stranger, will they not follow? Well, consider this question. What becomes of you if you will not hear Jesus? The answer is, Somebody claims you. If not Jesus, there is somebody whose voice you are growing accustomed to. The voice you follow now is the voice you grow accustomed to. And the voice you grow accustomed to is the voice of your owner in the end. Think about that. When you grow accustomed to to the voice of Jesus, you become more truly his. He becomes your owner. But if you persevere in listening to, obeying, and following after another voice, you can be sure of this, that your character is becoming fixed in conformity to that voice. You are gaining a different sort of owner. Now, in closing, I want to share with you an illustration from the biblical illustrator. The story goes on like this. There was an American who was traveling in Syria, and he saw three native shepherds bring their flocks to the same brook 
and the flocks drank there together. At length, one of the shepherds arose, and he called out, Mena, Mena, which in the Arabic means, Follow me, follow me. His sheep came out of the common herd and followed him up the hillside. The next shepherd did the same. He called out, Mena, Mena, which means follow me, follow me. And his sheep went away with him. And he didn't even have to stop to count them. They just came right out of the uh, flock there, the gathering, and they followed the shepherd. The American traveler said to the remaining shepherd, Give me your turban and your crook. I want to see if they'll follow me as soon as you. He put on the shepherd's dress and he called out, Mena, Mena. But lo and behold, not a sheep moved. They knew not the voice of a stranger. The American traveler then asked, Would your flock never follow anybody but you? And that Syrian shepherd replied, Oh yes, sometimes the sheep get sick, and then he will follow anyone. Oh, pay attention to what that Syrian shepherd said. He said, in answer to the question, Will your flock never follow anybody but you? He said, Oh yes, sometimes a sheep get sick, and then he will follow anyone. Let me ask you, is it not so with the flock of Christ when they do not follow the voice of Jesus, the voice of the shepherd, but they follow other voices? Is it not so that the church is sick? Exodus 23, 2 says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. From that we get that there are voices going throughout the world. Multitudes are following them. If the church is following the culture, if the church is following the world, if the church is following the culture, then we can conclude that the church is sick. Jesus said, My sheep know my voice. My sheep hear my voice, and they follow me. And a stranger will they not follow. That is, unless they are sick, spiritually speaking. Whatever voice you are following after, they are becoming your owner. Think about that. Whatever voice you are following today, you they are becoming your owner. Your character is becoming fixed in conformity to that voice. So I ask you, whose voice are you following today? Our time is up for today's broadcast. But I encourage you, stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of the theme, Striving for the Mastery. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you will walk in the truth every day of your life. In Jesus' name, amen.